Hi, today I want to talk about the ESP32 and the basics of GPIO to save you a lot of time, maybe to learn from my mistakes. If we look into the pinout of the ESP chip, maybe in this case, this revision, we see there is many, many GPIO pins from GPIO1 to GPIO39. So we have in total a lot of GPIO pins. And if we also look into the technical manual and then the data sheet of the ESP32, then we can see they are called general purpose input and output as also Wikipedia called them general purpose input output. And maybe as you maybe also suggest, if you call it general purpose input and output, then it is assumed that we can use the pin either as an input pin or also as an output pin. So we read this capabilities GPIO pins can configure it to be an input or an output. But there is also one word that is slightly interesting. So this may be so. So if we look now into the technical reference manual, we see we have an input matrix and below this we have also an output matrix and we can configure 34 of the GPI opens as an output. So 0 to 19, 21 to 23, 25 to 27 and also, and this is the newest version, 32 to 39. So if we rely on this, this is a little bit disappointing and I can show you why. <laughs> so I write a little slinky sketch that configures the pins 33, 34 and so on until 39 as an output pin. And then we write digital this output pin to high and low and wait a little time and do this in a loop. So now we can see at my bench what's going on. As you here see on the bench, I've configured the output straight to a resistor and then to an LED and the cathode of the LED goes to ground altogether. And as you might also see, there's only one LED blinking and we have to figure out why is this so. So on the Arduino IDE, we get no compiling error or any other error while running the sketch. And we have to dive a little bit into the libraries. So I found this ESP hardware abstraction layer or API definition for the Arduino sketches. And we have the digital write and the digital read function. And also we have the pin mode function where we define our GPIO pins as either an output or an input. And we find this interesting line if our pin is above 33, so 34 and up to 39, then our pin can only be configured as an input. So if we also now look into the code from the ESP IDF, then we have the same functionality. All GPIO pins 34 up to 39 can only be used in an input mode. And on the ESP IDF, we also get an error message if we try to configure the GPIO pin. So this is a little bit better. So we obviously see there's a conflict if we use the this GPIO pins as an output. But <laughs> the interesting question is why they just call them GPI pins and not GPIO. I don't know why. So thanks for watching my short video. I have so many work on my bench and my real work also took up some time. So I promise to do a little bit more videos in the future and I show you some projects I've done half a year ago and they're very interesting but now I'm able to publish the work. So thanks for watching. I hope you learned something today. I definitely learned something today and I wish you a nice day. See you next time and bye bye.